Hi everyone, how's it all going? Good, yeah, yeah, it's all right. I've got the tough gig after lunch, haven't I? <laughs> so there will be still some people coming through because we have changed venues, so we'll just keep going if that's all right with everyone. So, as Carolyn mentioned, I'm from Microsoft and I'm in the adoption and change management space in Microsoft, which means I am much more interested in talking about people than I am about technology. Uh, and one of the things that fascinates me the most is digital transformation and how it actually pertains to not just technology, but actually organisational culture as an overall whole. And so I think today I'm going to share a little bit about that. But because I'm always about people, I'm going to actually draw it back down into what it really means for me personally as well. So let's get started, yeah? Okay. New era of change, digital transformation. How many's heard of it? Please tell me you've heard of digital transformation. Yay! Okay. Um, look, there's a couple of things around that I think we, we just want to unpack. And the first is the term digital disruption. Who's got a mobile phone or some sort of portable device or something, yeah? Keep your hand up if you've got more than one. Uh, more than three? Oh, a couple, okay, yeah. yeah. My uh, eldest son has one. He's three and a half. I didn't buy it, by the way. <laughs> that's, that's care of his auntie, one of, one of my sisters, but he, he's got one. In fact, he's had it since he was one. Uh, so there are more devices out there in the world than there actually are people, uh, which is having an impact. That's disrupting. There's opportunity too. Disruption sometimes seen as negative. Uh, I, when I use the word disruption, I'm talking in the positive sense. But it's changing how we go about working, changing our personal lives, it's changing our working lives, and more and more of those two coming together. And that's part of digital transformation as well. The other part is that interconnectedness, teams. So we have a lot more teams in organisations now than we've ever had before. And the third point I really like, and I just want to pause on this, the data that's coming from all those devices, all the technology, and all those teams creating all of that extra information. It means that we've got 90% of the world's data was actually only created in the last two years. Now, let's just think about that for a minute. 90% in the last two years. Can you imagine the scale of the data that's going to be available in the next two years? It's huge, yeah? There's a lot of opportunities. It presents a lot of challenges for organisations as well. Uh, how much data, how, much quick, how quickly we can make decisions. There's a lot there. And so part of that digital transformation is knowing how to leverage that to our advantage and not get overwhelmed by that. And I think the, the important part here is we've got a lot of surveys out there in the world and Microsoft teams up with a number of key institutes around that. And we've, the data that's coming in are telling us that business leaders, around about half, they're actually saying, do you know what? We expect our entire business model to cease to exist in five years. Entire business model. Now, I was at the uh, opening ceremony yesterday morning where I had the pleasure of hearing your president speak about the journey that ADB are on. And I think it's fair to say that your business model uh, is going to be influenced by the transformation that you're on. So you are one of probably one of those leaders that are actually making that claim at the moment. So I've got two words for you. Digital transformation. Everyone hones in on digital. It's probably the first thing that we all talk about. Because I'm that people kind of person, I actually think the greater impact is transformation. And so I think a, a different way of looking at digital transformation is more around transforming business culture in a digital era. And when you start to think of it from that point of view, it absolutely opens up the horizon. And it will influence organisations, but more importantly, it's going to influence the people within those organisations, you. So when we say digital workplace, that's part of digital transformation. What are we really talking about? Well, I've talked about that big data, and you yourselves are on the journey for Microsoft Office 365 and a number of other key initiatives playing at the moment. So what comes with that is cloud-based service. That's an ongoing iterative change. 
constant change. And in fact, your managing director general at the last Insights Thursday was actually calling that out, that change is the only constant. It's the only thing that you can actually be guaranteed is going to continue happening. And we as human beings, we're not all that great at liking change. And so how we embrace that and how organisations look to drive that change, how we manage that has got to change as well. So ideas of big, long programs with a, a planning, analysis, and a whole lot of change, that's very valid, very worthwhile, and still a lot of those are running. But what more and more is now starting to move is actually more into agilic change. How much can we absorb in a way that we're not going to explode in the process? And so this is around looking at some of those impacts too. Did you know that the sector that you're in is actually the sector that's investing the most in digital workplace, digital transformation? which means your competitors, and I know even, for, even in that concept of public service, even in the public service space, everyone's getting on board. Everyone's already investing. Everyone's already moving forward. And one of the comments that struck with me that was made yesterday from the president was saying, we're actually already a little bit behind, and our journey is about getting ahead of the game. And trust me, you're on that journey. You're going to get there in no time flat. So are your competitors. And so part of this is really thinking that through. OK. <clears throat> Who's heard of people process technology? Yeah? A little bit? Yeah? What we're actually shifting to is people culture technology. And the first question I often hear is, what happened to process? That hierarchical, that siloed structure that many organisations are designed on, including this one, the shift is more into that network. How much as a network can you operate? How much of that culture is going to shift with that? Process will be defined as that goes. But the real focus is actually on the cultural elements of that. How you operate, the days, your working lives. The opportunities that come from that can be quite monumental. So therefore, CEOs absolutely, and a large chunk of them, as you can see, have got this as their number one top priority. So when we say digital workplace, what we're really saying is employees are placing actually a hell of a lot more demand on employers. Millennials, that term gets banded about. Who's heard of millennials? Yeah, Gen Y? Yeah, same kind of term. So when we're really talking about that, the age group, what we're really saying, and there's debate around when it officially starts and when it officially ended, but you're really talking about those that are currently around 15, thereabouts, to those that are around about 35, 37. So I'm actually, and I'm giving away the age here, but I'm right on the cusp. So I could be a Gen X or I could be a millennial. And I must say, I switch between the two depending on the audience and what works for me. <laughs> But what that does mean is there are uh, how much they're integrated with technology. So when we often say Gen Y millennials, we're often thinking really younger people. We actually have a lot of people in our workplace already uh, at management level who are classified as a millennial, which means how they have operated with their technology, how much uh, in their social lives they're already, already digitally savvy, they're bringing to organisations. And they're expecting more and more from organisations for that. It's about attra attracting talent and retaining talent. To get the best of the best, organisations now have to present leading edge, new ways to keep the talent in the room and get the right people in the door. It's also around really that morale and that, remember that network, that culture piece? It's well, how much of the technology going to enable that as well? And the organisations that are embracing that are actually using that as part of their marketing to say, look what we're doing. Because they're acutely aware that the, to, com to continue to compete in the market, they're going to need those millennials, they're going to need everyone else, they need to keep attracting the right talent. So that's one of the reasons why organisations are on this journey. 
The other element I just want to call out before I start drilling that down into an individual story is the technology and the people piece. What's really happening here is technology and people are actually getting closer and closer together. There's a lot of work being done on artificial intelligence. There's a lot of technology now that's very people-centric. And so how much that's coming together is, is monumental in a way that we've not seen in the world before. And that's part of digital transformation as well. OK. Culture is the new currency. Culture, culture. OK, what am I really saying? Right, well, let me share with you Microsoft's story. We're actually not too dissimilar for ADB, believe it or not. Been around a while, just like yourselves. We've got a legacy, just like yourselves. And we're on our own transformational journey. And I think it's fair to say we're still on that journey, just as much as yourselves. We're not there yet. So when you think about Microsoft, we've ebbed and flowed. We've had times where we've absolutely dominated the market. And then there are times where Apple was probably more popular for a period as well. We've also got now, it's not just Microsoft versus Apple. We've got all sorts of other technology coming in. We've got strong competitors out there. And so the shift that Microsoft is on is about actually thinking through the people dynamics more. And there's a quote from our new CEO, Satya Nadella. I say new, he's been around for a couple of years. But when you think of the long-term perspective from Microsoft, that's still fairly new. Uh, he is absolutely driving change in our organisation. And he is very much all about growth mindset. There's a term there that we often use. And that's, that's really important because it means that Microsoft is shifting from trying to be the expert in the room all the time. We're now looking to have an open dialogue and learn just as much as we can provide. And if you think that's, that sounds all a little fluffy, it sounds great, how does that relate to digital transformation? Well, part of this is around innovation. Part of this is around how Microsoft is moving through into digital transformation in its own space. And we can't just look at technology to do that anymore. We've got to look at the people side as well. So there's a journey that Microsoft is on internally to revise our culture. And there's also what we're doing with our own technology. It's very, very more people-centric. And here are just a couple of examples. I won't talk too much technical. But you'll see here that what we're really talking about is things like a Surface Hub. Who's heard of a Surface Hub? Ah, OK, a couple of, yeah, a few IT folk in the room. So Surface Hubs is where you've actually got, if you think about a whiteboard, it's a digital version of that. But you can also have Skype and all sorts of things on it too. So that's a new way for people to run meetings, way for people to interact and connect. Right through to artificial intelligence, we're doing a lot of work in that space. So as I said, I'm not going to talk too much technical, but Office 365 is part of that people-centric mentality and the technology that's reflecting that. And when you get more exposure to the Office 365 as that starts to get rolled out, you will absolutely start to see that. So let's get on to the personal side of things. I wanted to share with you my personal journey. So I'm officially... <coughs> Uh, I'll, for this today, I will accept I'm a Gen Y millennial. <laughs> so it's actually a good thing. But what they, the reputation of, of that is probably a little misunderstood. So I'm going to unpack that a little bit. Before I do, I just want to call out that there's been a lot of studies now on millennials around what they're looking for from the workplace and how that relates into when we think of that from a digital transformation perspective. And I think the, this slide calls it out in a way that I, I think is a good reflection of my own personal interests as well. It's not all about the money. And there's a Gen Y reputation, oh, they're all about having fun. They all want to be promoted to a CEO by the age of 21. Yeah, they expect so much. We've, we've mollycoddled them and now they think everything's theirs. Sounding familiar? Yeah? It's actually not quite the case. There's a lot of research that's starting to show they are actually looking for a much deeper connection with their organisations, their employers, than probably what we first understood. How much of that 
plays out for an organisation like ADB is actually really important, just as it is for Microsoft. So that cultural change that I mentioned that Microsoft is on, well, it's being led by leaders right from the very top. But what it's also, some of that technology I was showing you, if we aren't attracting the millennials and the next generation that comes in after them, if we aren't presenting a working environment that is something that's conducive to the way that they normally operate, we're not going to have the intelligence and that innovation to rethink new and creative ways of developing technology and improving outcomes for people right across the world. We won't have that opportunity. And it's the same for ADB. How much you can support your clients will actually depend on that as well. So back to my personal story. Yep, cash is important for me, but that training and development and that flexible hours is really important. Okay, here we go. This is me in my 20s. Yes, it's me, true. <laughs> I used to do crazy things like jumping out of aeroplanes. Someone said to me one day, why would you jump out of a perfectly good aeroplane? My response, have you seen the aeroplanes that I jump out of? Trust me, I'm better out of them than in. <laughs> a lot of fun, a bit of an expensive sport. So when I was in my 20s, I was probably that typical Gen Y view where it was about more things than just working. I was very career centric too, but I wanted that balance from that point of view. So yeah, cash was important because it helped funded this. But so was the network and the community that I was able to uh, have around me. Part of being a skydiver is you actually have a very close network. And so that interconnectedness is something that I was very much looking for. And therefore, this is me now in my 30s. These are my two boys. I have a three and a half year old and a two year old. He turned two last weekend. So for me, my priority is actually about flexible work-life balance. And if, when you think Gen Y and you're thinking that fun, I'm that generation. So we are looking for a deeper connection. And part of therefore a digital workplace has really enabled me to embrace that properly. I, my previous employer prior to Microsoft had uh, a work from home day for me, one day a week. That was and to help me stay close to my boys. But what I found was because the culture of that organisation hadn't really fully adjusted to rethinking that. Yes, I was able one day a week to work from home, but I was more plugged in on that day, more proving that I was working for that period of time than I probably was when I was in the office. I pumped out more work on that day than I did any other day. And I didn't see much of my boys as a result. And that's because I still had to prove that I was doing something. So that whole culture hadn't shifted with the tech. Technology meant I could work from home, but the culture hadn't gone with it. One of the reasons why I work for Microsoft is because the culture has shifted with it. So I can work literally from anywhere, any device, at home, in the office, in front of yourselves, I move around at the airport, you name it, coffee shops. But more importantly, I have a management and an overall organisation that's very much shifting into outcome focused, not how much time did you spend on something. We're on that journey, we're still transitioning, but I've got a manager who's more interested in talking about outcomes than the activities or seeing me switched on online. So therefore, during the day when my boys are interested in, in actually seeing their mum, I'm able to dedicate some time to that. And then what I can do at night time when they've gone to bed is I can pick up the work and, and still do a complete day because I work full time. That gives me that flexibility. Now, not everyone's got children and it's not always a female working mum. Sometimes the dads are wanting the exact same thing. And it might be that you're still skydiving like I am and you're more interested in doing that. It's still that flexibility. It's still designed to actually be able to cater for merging people and technology greater together, merging our personal lives and our work lives together in a way that's healthy. Because I know for me personally, one of my biggest fears was if I've all of a sudden got access that I can be switched on at any point, any time, Office 365, does that mean I'm 24 seven? And that was, that's a genuine concern, we often hear that. It's actually not, it's the complete opposite. Part of that is the culture shift that's got to go with that. 
And I can be very pleased to inform you, I am seeing evidence of that culture shift. You are on the beginning of that journey right now. So you are actually in the process of doing this. The journey has begun. So that was my personal story I wanted to share with you. I thought it was important to relate that back. And so just to re-close, the only lasting message I'm actually going to leave you with is, when you're thinking about your digital workplace and you're hearing the term digital transformation, think less of the digital and more of that transformation and the role you've got in driving that and being part of that. And so therefore, think of it as transforming a business culture in a digital era. And then the world's your oyster. Thank you very much.